All right, so here I'm standing on the 18th of TBC Southwind. Just finished the weekly. Didn't do great. I'm in the top 50 now, but that, that's not going to stay. Uh, but that's a story for another time. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, hey, what are your what are your settings? How do you have it? How do you have it set up? So I wanted to kind of give you a quick little guide uh, on what my setup is, and uh, I'll put some some chapters in there so you can look at the different clubs without having to see the whole video and and uh, have no no idea how long this video will be uh, hopefully not too long but I just wanted to show you everything so the first place I want to start all right is in the the settings so I've never actually played around with the graphics quality I've left it a hundred percent I mean I, I look around I don't know how it looks in this video but it looks pretty awesome you know here in the headset so I'm perfectly fine I recommend version physics version 2 or else you won't see most of what I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, I keep the shot shaper on. Uh, this is not a video about the shot shaper. A lot of people have a a um, preconceived notion that the shot shaper is either cheating or it just tells your shot where to go. That's that's not what it does. It can help a little bit if you want to put a little draw or fade on the ball. I don't actually use that part of it. I only use it for like the height. So. If I want to set up like normal, but I want the ball flight to be a little higher without, say, having to move the ball to my front foot, um, you know, and just have it a little fly higher and take off a few yards, that's that's basically what I use the, the shot shaper uh, for. Uh, and it also kind of tells me where the line on my ball is, is aiming. Now, the shot shaper will not, you know, take care of the flight of your ball. You You have to do that. If you hit it 20 yards out to the right, it's going to go 20 yards out to the right, no matter what your shot shaper is showing. Um, so it's not going to, it's, it's not going to help your, your shots in that, that form. Like I said, I mainly use it for, for like the height of the ball. Uh, and that's about it. Um, none of these really matter. You can have what you, what you want. Club selection doesn't really matter. I mean, I have it on smart, because it, it tries to pick a club. It's almost, by the way, it's almost never right because everybody swings differently. You know, I say if my, if my nine iron is 150 yards and I'm completely flat with, with no wind, I'll probably hit it about 154, 154 yards. And other people I know will hit it 140, right? So the club selection mode is not really based off of who you are and how you hit the ball. So it doesn't really matter what this is. Um, but at least the smart is, is going to be there. Most of the time it's it's only one club off if it's off. Um, now here's some interesting settings that I want to that I want to hold down. I recommend you have this on because when you're playing it could be a huge battery saver. Uh, helps you play a little faster. So like once I hit the ball, say I swing through, I swing through, I hit the ball and it's on its flight. I've, I've done everything I can do. I hold down the trigger and it makes it go real fast. Uh, and you know like play around in 20 minutes say instead of 27 minutes so that'll save your battery uh i like to always show green contours like you can see right now it's it's showing the green contours on this green right i don't have to lift my my controller up or anything it's just it's 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 always on right um now since i finished playing if i put it way down then it goes off but this is what it looks like all the time for me right so it's just it's always on helps me visualize the shots uh for some people uh, they don't like to see it when they play it. That's fine. Uh, this is a video about my setup and people want to know what it was. So there it is. So I think that that definitely helps me. I don't hide the flag. I don't trade out the fail, uh, trade out, um, uh, fade out the trail. Uh, I take off the no trail on green and the rotate the ball. And what, what basically what all that does, uh, for me is it keeps my trail on hundred percent. So from the moment I hit the ball to the moment it stops, until I hit the trigger button for the next shot, my entire trail is there. So I can see the flight of the ball through the air and exactly what it's doing without having to like take a moment out and like look at the stats to see how much it curves. You know, I can see, I can visualize where I want my line to go with the shot and then I can see if the, the trail does what I thought it would do. Um, so it helps me visualize it. Same with the, same with the green when I'm putting it helps me know if I've put the ball on the exact line that I want, because uh, until I again go to the next shot, so you can see right here I finished I finished playing. This was a short, short par putt uh, that I had. Um, 
but you can see the trail is there and until I actually now this is the last hole so it doesn't go away but um, if I was to then click my trigger to go to the next screen but it'll stay here so if I was putting from say way back here you know I would still see that entire trail and I could use that to help me figure out yeah you know, it's just helped me that's helped me a lot over time by watching those so when I see breaks like this uh, you know for example when I'm over here the more putts I have where the lines are about this far apart so I've had a ton of putts like this right and I can visualize what the trails doing right I can say oh I've had lots of putts just like this and I know that the trails gonna start here and I know it's gonna go up now it's gonna start curving and go right to the hole like this helps me visualize the putt and then of course I can see that feedback when I hit it so during play those are my settings that I use uh, during play. I don't think there's anything in in UI. Let's see. I don't know. There's nothing with controller. I do use the Yezero Q3. So there's a picture of it. So there's there's what I use. Um, so you know, it's I'm ho so the controller is in my right hand right now, and I'm going to move my right hand back to the grip, and then push it away. So that's about how long my attachment is. I don't know what's that. 18 inches maybe. So now it's back in my in my hand, right? So that's about how long the attachment is, and, and I like it. It seems to do well, but you know, to each their own. Um, what do you want to see? The only other thing in here. Okay, so let's go to the swing. So for my global settings, I'll give you a little backstory. So when I I started playing like eight months ago, right? And when I first started playing, I was like pretty much any other golfer. Even on amateur, I shoot like 30 over, right? So. I tried to watch some videos, read some stuff. C Van's guide that she puts together is is really good. Uh, you know, I read you know that start to finish, and that's a that's a good starting point. Um, and one of the things that I used to do is we'll talk about the the global setting. So right now I'm pretty much set on my putting feel at five percent soft. It just it it just it just as much as I've putted, that seems to be the best feel of the ball coming off the putt. Now, I used to change it. So, for example, many months ago, uh, and if you're a beginner, I might recommend doing this because it really helped learn the different green speeds. I would have 0% soft when I was on fast greens. Never played medium, by the way. No, any competition that you ever have will ever be on medium green, so don't even bother with it. Um, especially not the Golf Plus run ones. Um, and uh, let's see, started at 0%, and when I went up to fast greens, or very, uh, sorry, very fast greens, I put the putting feel at 20%. It allowed me to put it like I was putting on fast greens, but it would come off a lot softer, and it would do the very fast feel. Same with the, uh, the pro greens. If I ever played on pro greens, uh, I would put it up to like 40%, right? Same thing. I could put almost as fast with a, uh, you know, it's like a fast green, but it will come off super slow off the off the putt and wind up going about the same distance. Now, I will tell you, that's not 100% accurate, right? If you've got a 20-foot downhill fast green putt, say 0.4 downhill, and you've got a 20-foot downhill 0.4 with the pro, you have to hit that, you have to barely tap that, that pro one for it to go. So even with 40% feel, if you put yourself... Um, if you putted it like it was a fast putt, you're going to run 20 feet by, right? Pro greens are a whole other animal. But once you get really good with that, that feel, what I started doing was I started putting with it on on 0% no matter what I played because I felt like I swing the club pretty easily, right? And I can change my speeds based on how I want it to go. And obviously, very fast and pro differ in their brakes a lot from from fast so so obviously for example you know this putt right here it's going to be pretty close to a straight put on fast because you have to hit a little harder on very fast you got to put it out a little bit further to the left on pro you might have to put that bad boy out here because if you don't want it to run 10 feet by you got to give it more time on the green which means it's going to have more time to take the break so when you go between green speeds you can't just put the same putt but slower like if you go from fast to very fast, because it's going to break more. And same when you go up to pro. So when you get, but I would recommend when you start out, do the 0, 20, 40 method. Or whatever you do on fast. Like if you have 20%, you know, firm, 
take it down to zero very fast and then say 20, 25% for, for pro and get used to the same, you know, for a 20 foot putt, get used to no matter what greens you're on, swinging with the same. And once you get pretty good uh, at that, eventually I found myself settling on 5% soft. Um, and I use that no matter whether I play fast, very fast, or pro, but I've played enough now to where I can adjust my swing accordingly. So it, it, uh, it works pretty well for me. So there's my setting, 5% soft. Chipping feel and sand feel, I left on neutral. Um, I never really adjusted these when I first started playing, and I found pretty early on I was a really good chipper and a really good sand player. Um, so I never felt the need to change them, so I left them as neutral. I mean, you know, it their own on how they want to do them, but these have never been anything but neutral my entire time I've been playing. So uh, I guess the main thing is when it comes down to the global settings, you can really put it wherever you want to in the middle of this, you know, that 20 to 20 range. And, you know, once you play 100 rounds with those settings, that's what you're going to be used to. So I wouldn't put too much feel on it, but if you want to go ahead and put it uh, where somebody at my level plays, this is, you know, this is where I play. You know, you might have a wide variety of people, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so, let's see. Let's run through there. Let's run through the clubs. So, here's my driver. One thing you'll notice between the driver all the way down to the sand wedge is I have my power assistant set at 100%. Again, to dispel any misinformation out there, the power assistance does not mean that you will hit you know, 100% harder than somebody who is at, say, 0%, right? What it means is, is you can swing less. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a Quest 3, and I have the, uh, you know, the stock controllers. And unlike the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro, or any of the Quests with the Pro controllers, the, uh, up here in the face is where the sensors are, and they have around the outside, I wish I could show my finger but I can't, but around the outside edges of this controller are all the sensors. And so the tracking is there. Here's the problem. If you take it past about here and your head is looking down, if you go any further back than that, the headset loses tracking and it's got to catch it about right here. It's got to catch it as it comes back through and you could have a lot of errors. So I bring my backswing to about here, right? Right about here so that my headset never loses tracking from it, right? Now, at 0% on the power assistance, I, I can't hit a full shot that way, unless I bring it down so fast that, uh, that you know, I lose control over what the face angle is at that point. I want a nice, smooth, you know, swing through the ball. So that's why I use power assistance at 100%. And um, from, what I've, from what I've gathered, a lot of... Uh, the big name, really good players, even on the, the pro side, do that as well. So I gave it a shot, and it, it wound up working out pretty well. Um, so this is going to be the same on all the clubs. I'll just go here real quick. I have my length at 30%. Because uh, when I set up to the ball, I I play real golf, so my hands are a little lower. They don't, I don't stretch them out like this. My, my hands are, are way down lower. So I use a shorter percentage, right? So my length is 30%, and I didn't mess with the rotation because you don't, you don't have to, right? You could rotate the club. Um, really, the only thing that that would be really good at is um, if you have an attachment, you can obviously hold the attachment like this. I can hold it like this. I can hold it like, like I can hold the attachment with the club head where I want to. If... I was using just the controller. Let's say you put your hand down and it's tilted like this, but you don't want to like twist your arm on your swing or whatever. You want to have it a nice, good feel. You can take the rotation and you can rotate the face to where it's square based on how you're holding the club. So that's really the only thing I see about the rotation. Um, you know, if it's too short, if the clubs are too short or too long, you'll you'll hit it out to the left or hit it out to the right. I think if it's too short, you'll get a lot of you'll get more flares out to the right. Uh, and if you, if you got them too long, you'll, you'll get some more pulls. I could be backwards on that, but it's, it's, um, it's adjustable with the other things that I'll talk about here in a second. Um, but you want to get it to where your hands are down in your normal swing. And when you put your hands down and, and the club head goes to the ground, you want it to rest right about on the ground. If that's what it's doing, then you got it at the right length. 
If it's up here, you know, you might need your club length to be longer. If it's down here, you see how it see how it moves. You know, so if it's down here, then your club is too short, right? You got to make it a little longer. Because when you go back to swing, you can see how when you go back to swing, it, it comes out. So it's hitting the ground there. So you just want to, when you have your normal swing set up, set your length to where you want it to be. So for me, like I said, I'm at 30%, and I didn't bother with the, the rotation. Um, so let's go through the clubs real quick. Uh, I have adjusted these numbers over time. Uh, I've got a video out there. It's it's older. Uh, I wasn't anywhere near as good as I am now uh, when I made that video. But my my advice on the power assistance was, you know, make your swing and adjust the power assistance up until you got to the point where you made a full swing. Where when you made your full swing, it went the full distance and stopped there. Um, I think that's really good advice for beginners, right? But once you get real, once you get a lot better at this game, once you're shooting well into the 60s each time I, I would recommend getting used to the power assistance at 100 percent for for most of your clubs but again different people do it do it different ways but the moment I switched to 100 percent just after a few rounds I was shaving strokes off because I could make easier swings I could put the ball in the back or the front of my stance manipulate it a little easier and I didn't have to worry about you know swinging too hard so for my driver all the way down to my sand wedge it's at 100 percent okay now, on my driver, I have the spin bias at 40% and the direction at 20% pull. Most of my clubs are on a draw bias and a, and a pull bias. There's a couple of exceptions, and I'll show you when I get down there. This is just because when I get out and swing, that's where I want the ball. You know, when I, when I, when I swing to try and hit a straight shot, that's what these settings do for me. When I think I'm hitting, when I swing, and I think I'm hitting a straight shot, it... it comes off a little to the right and fades so these settings are what do it uh, for me now uh, before I get into the other clubs I will say probably in the last three to four months I've adjusted these three times when I say adjust you know, three months ago my spin bias to draw on my driver I think was at like 45 percent now I got it down to, to 40 because I'm fine tuning it. I usually don't don't make any adjustments until I get like 10, 20 rounds in and I just if I happen to notice, oh my eight iron is, is always going five yards to the left, always. Uh and with a little more draw than I want, then I may come in here and pick the eight iron, take the spin bias in the direction down a little bit. So there's my driver. Five wood, a little more. For some reason with my five wood, uh I need to have it on a little more little more pull uh, but a little less draw right and I have been having some small issues with my five wood going a little further to the right than I want not all the time but sometimes so I'm paying close attention when I use it and uh, I might come in here and update these a little bit to go a little more towards draw and pull but that's to be seen the three iron a little less draw a little less pull it tends to go pretty straight with these settings the four iron uh, is the same, five iron is the same, six iron is the same, seven iron is the same, but then when we get to the eight iron, uh, actually, oh, okay, so here's a good note. The eight iron didn't used to be the same. I actually changed this a couple days ago. Uh, I had the spin bias on 37 draw and 30% pull for my eight iron, uh, and I was probably about four out of five shots. I was just pulling the Pulling the 8-iron a little bit, and it was drawing about a yard or two more than I wanted to. So I came and dropped both of these down to 5% to match the other irons. Uh, with the 9-iron, you can see I'm a little bit more on the pull. Was it? Yeah, a little bit more on the pull, but the 9-iron goes pretty straight. I actually did adjust. Uh, the 7-iron and the 8-iron used to be 5% more on each of these, but the 7 and the 8-iron were pulling. So that's why I dropped it back down. And the 9-iron, I have a little bit more pull, and it goes it goes pretty straight. Um, pitch and wedge, same as, as, as that. Now, here's, here's the interesting thing. Here's the interesting thing. So the gap wedge. <laughs> so I know this looks weird, but with the gap wedge, because I have the shorter clubs, and because it's such a small, it's a 122-yard gap wedge 
for me. And if you notice, Sandwich is there too, right? Uh, for some reason, and I'm not really sure why, I don't have any spin bias or direction on these because when I first started playing them, I did the same thing I did with all my clubs, and I said, well, let me hit it with neutral and see how it goes. Well, from day one, uh, when I changed to this gap wedge and this sand wedge, which um, was about a month ago, I took out my three wood and I put in a gap wedge so I could have an extra wedge. Um, if they ever let me remove my three through nine or pitching wedge, my three through pitching wedge, I will put my three wood back in my bag and get rid of the three iron. I hit the three iron once every four rounds, and sometimes I want to hit the three wood two or three times in a single round, but having the gap wedge and removing the three wood is better for me. Um, but if I can ever remove that three iron, I would definitely do that and put the three wood back in the bag, but can't do that for now. Um, so the gap wedge and the sand wedge, yeah, are at neutral. And uh, when I made that change about a month ago, I just started hitting them, you know, playing in, playing in some rounds, and I was just peppering the flag. So I was like, well, I'm not going to put any spin bias or direction on them at all. And the lob wedge, a little different story. Uh, I have the lob wedge down at 60%. Now, now why? Now, like I said, because I take such a short backswing, if I just took a normal backswing like I do with most of my clubs, my 80-yard lob wedge at 60% power will go about 60 yards. So that's just me knowing the, the club. Um, but I like that because sometimes I get those, those shots, but... If I want to then drop my yardage, uh, I just swing a little less. So the reason why my lob wedge is, is down, a lot of people with bigger swings might have it set even lower. But, you know, a lob wedge is what I use to, to chip with and, and uh, you know, do all my shots inside of 80 yards, obviously. Um, you know, barring massive wind. So, you know, I use that club a lot. So I felt with 100% power assistance, it was really hard for me to slow the club down and not have it go the full 80 yards, right? Maybe I'd swing a little less than I normally do, but it would still go 80 yards. And I'd be like, well, that's not what I want. So I figured out, I went out to the, I went out to a course and went out and figured out, okay, at what power assistance does my normal full swing get at 80 yards? And that's what I settled on. So now I know anything below my normal full swing, uh, I know I can start taking yardage off. So that's why I have the lob wedge set there. Uh, and again, the spin bias and the and the direction look very similar to let's say the seven iron or close yeah close to those, right? Little less little less uh, or a little more pull direction on it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what I use. So you know, driver no three wood, five wood, three iron through pitching wedge, uh, gap wedge and replace replace of the three wood then the sand wedge and and I drop down from the stock sand wedge so my sand wedge is a hundred yards not a hundred and ten see the gap is 122 the sand wedge is a hundred versus the old the uh, the hundred and ten that it gave me by default when I first started and the lob wedge is is uh is 80 and I find that to be a pretty good mix um you know if I <laughs> Maybe if they ever let us remove these, I might take the three and the four out, put my three wood back in, and uh, and add a fourth wedge, even, right? Um, <clears throat> because the pitching wedge and the lob wedge between those four clubs, that's twelve out of my eighteen shots on a lot of on a lot of courses, you know, unless you're super far back. Um, but even with the par fives, that can be, you know, where I settle. So, all right. There's my settings. I don't know if there's anything else worth worth showing. Let's see. Don't have any. Uh... Oh, if you wanted to see what the what the actual clubs themselves are, uh, keep in mind that none of the stuff changes your changes your uh, the performance of the clubs, except for the driver. Uh, and only in such that if you look at all the different the different clubs, you see 315 on some, and you see 310 on a couple of other ones, or, or on this one I think it's on on 310. So, but that's that's not a lot, right? The shaft, the grip, 
Uh, let's see. So the Stealth Plus driver I use. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so there's the Stealth Club driver that I use. Uh, the shaft, which should be the same on all the clubs. I'm the Velocity Orange, and my favorite color is orange, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so that's what I use on that one. Uh, the grip, got a little little orange in it, so I use the orange one, just the stock Golf Plus orange one. I guess they all are. Um, the 5 wood is the the, uh, the Stealth 5 wood. Again, there's a 5 yard difference over, you know, one of them. Uh, and then the irons, I use the black Apex irons because I think they look pretty cool. And I hit Callaways in real life, just not the Apex ones. Uh, the gap wedge, like I said, I use the 122, I think it's 122 yards is what it shows on the thing, but there's the range. Um, sand wedge is the 100 yard sand wedge, you can see the range. There's the lob wedge, that's the 80 yard one. Uh, let's see, that's the Callaway, that's uh, I don't even know what this one is. Uh, let me hold on. Let me see. So yeah, the apex for the irons, the gap wedge is the yeah you know, the tailor made pearl chrome. I, I mainly picked it because of the the range it has. I wanted that 120 club, not the 128. Like some of them are like this is like a 128 one. I didn't want the higher one. Uh, sand wedge is tailor made and high toe. Again, I wanted the 100 yard versus the old 110 yard one. So I took that off. Lob wedge I think is actually the default maybe I don't know if I've ever actually changed the lob wedge maybe I have if I did it was a long time ago but you know it's the 80 yard club so there's what that is um, I do use uh, the blade putter and I don't actually know if if I've ever changed it I, I don't think so. maybe maybe not I don't know it's hard to tell maybe the white hot is what it came I don't know I don't know if that's what it came with but um, I have heard, I've never played with a mallet, but I have heard the ball comes off the mallets a little hotter. So if I switch to a mallet, I would probably adjust my putting feel down to, you know, maybe 10, 12% or something like that. I mean, I'd test it out and find out kind of what the difference was. And then I'd adjust it so that the mallet acts like I'm used to the, to the blade acting. So just be aware if you do go to a mallet one, the, that it will, from what I've heard, come off the, the ball will come off the blade a little hotter. Um, so and that's the clubs I use and then the ball is just I, hey an orange ball you know I throw orange around everywhere so um, you know the again other than some of the distances that you see on some of the clubs which are not much the, probably the biggest piece was find the wedge find the wedges that work for you um, the driver five yard difference the woods there's a five yard difference between some of them uh, and other than that, the shaft, the uh, the ball, the you know that kind of stuff. And other the the putter, the the blade versus the mallet, and it coming a little hotter off the mallet. Um, that's the only really difference in the clubs. So they're slight. But like I said, the one that really changed my game was getting rid of the three wood, adding that extra wedge. Um, that's probably shaved two or three strokes around off by going to a three wedge setup. Um, so. Uh, I think that's about it. I think I've showed you everything that I've got. Uh, I do play some pro. You know, I'm, I stay around six, between 16 and 17 usually uh, on the amateur, but I don't I don't go handicap hunting. So all my handicaps are based on pretty much competitive and tournament rounds. Pro on at plus 16. I'm getting a little better on pro, but the the Quest 3 and its tracking tracking challenges uh, sometimes make pro not not quite as fun. But uh, you know. Again, that's for another day. Uh, all right, I think that's that's about it. I uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, if you ever wanted to know my setup and everything I do, there it is. All right, have a good one.